Discover Johannesburg, Africa's wealthiest city. Hello, Displorers. Welcome to another exciting video presented to you by Displore. In this video, we shall explore Africa's wealthiest city, Johannesburg. Johannesburg is the largest city in South Africa and one of the 50 largest urban areas in the world. It is the provincial capital and largest city of Gauteng, which is the wealthiest province in South Africa. Johannesburg is the seat of the Constitutional Court, the highest court in South Africa. Most of the major South African companies and banks have their head offices in Johannesburg. The city is located in the mineral-rich Witwatersrand range of hills and is the center of large-scale gold and diamond trade. It was one of the host cities of the official tournament of the 2010 FIFA World Cup. The metropolis is an alpha global city as listed by the Globalization and World Cities Research Network. In 2019, the population of the city of Johannesburg was over 5.6 million, making it the most popular city in South Africa. But then, what makes Johannesburg to be considered Africa's wealthiest city is going to incorporate this video. But first, we need to understand the history of a city to get where its wealth comes from. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. History of Johannesburg The region surrounding Johannesburg was originally inhabited by San Honta gatherers who used stone tools. There is evidence that they lived there for up to 10 centuries ago. Stone walled reigns of Sotho, Twana towns and villages are scattered around the parts of the former Transvaal in which Johannesburg is situated. By the mid 18th century, the broader region was largely settled by various Sotho, Twana communities whose villages, towns, chiefdoms, and kingdoms stretched from what is now Botswana in the west to present day Sotho in the south, to the present day Pedi areas of the northern province. More specifically, the stone walled reigns of Sotho, Twana towns and villages are scattered around the parts of the former Transvaal province in which Johannesburg is situated. Many Sotho Twana towns and villages in the areas around Johannesburg were destroyed and their people driven away during the wars emanating from Zuzuland during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The main Witwaters Rand Gold Reef was discovered in June 1884 on the farm of Vogels Fontaine by Jean Jerixtes Banchters that triggered the Witwaters Rand Gold Rush and the founding of Johannesburg in 1886. The discovery of gold rapidly attracted people to the area, making necessary a name of government's organization for the area. Jan, Johan and Johannes were common male names among the Dutch of that time. Two men involved in surveying the area of the best locations of the city, Christian Johannes, Joubert and Johan Rizik, are considered the source of the name by some. Johannes Meyer, the first government official in the area, is another possibility. Precise records for the choice of name were lost. Within 10 years, the city of Johannesburg included 100,000 people. Under the system of apartheid, a comprehensive system of racial segregation was imposed upon South Africa, starting in 1948. In the 1950s, the government began a policy of building townships of black outside of Johannesburg, such as Soweto, to provide workers for Johannesburg. Soweto grew in number, almost outgrowing the population of Johannesburg. And in March 1960, Johannesburg witnessed widespread demonstrations against apartheid in response to the Sharpeville massacre. On 11th July 1963, the South African police raided a house in the Johannesburg suburb of Rivonia, where the members of the banned African National Congress were arrested on charges of planning sabotage. The arrest led to the famous Rivonia trial. The nine arrested included one Indo-South African, one colored, two whites and five blacks one of whom was the future president Nelson Mandela. Like many cities around the world, there is an increasing focus on the rejuvenation of the inner city of Johannesburg. One of these initiatives is the Maboneng district located on the southeastern side of the CBD. Originally a hub for art, it has expanded to include restaurants, entertainment venues and retail stores as well as accommodation and hotels. Physicality of Johannesburg Johannesburg may not be built on a river or harbour, but its streams contribute to two of Southern Africa's mightiest rivers, the Limpopo and the Orange. Most of the springs from which many of these streams emanate are now covered in concrete and colonized, accounting for the fact that the names of earlier farms in the area often end with Fonten, meaning spring, in Afrikaans like Bram Fonten, Rent Fonten, Zeven Fonten, Don Fonten, Zan Fonten and Rajin Fonten, etc. Another explanation is that the whiteness comes from the quartzite's rock, which has a particular sheen to it after rain. The site was not chosen solely for its streams, however. One of the main reasons the city was founded 
where it stands today was because of the gold, as earlier mentioned. Indeed, at one point, the Witwatersrand run gold industry produced 40% of the planet's gold. The city is often described as Africa's economic powerhouse and contentiously as a modern and prosperous African city. Johannesburg, like many metropolises, has more than one central business district, including but not limited to Santon, Rosebank and Roadport in addition to the regional CBD. Due to its many different central districts, Johannesburg would fall under the multiple nuclei model in human geography terms. It is the hub of South Africa's commercial, financial, industrial and mining undertakings. Johannesburg is part of a larger urban region. Johannesburg is home to some of Africa's tallest structures, such as the St. Tech Toa, Hillbrow Toa, the Carlton Centre and Ponte City Apartments. The Johannesburg City skyline has most of the tallest buildings on the continent and contains most international organizations such as IBM, ABSTA, BHP Billiton, Willis Group, First National Bank, Ned Bank and Standard Bank. Many of the city's older buildings have been demolished and more modern ones built in their place. The CBD is predominated by four styles of architecture, being Victorian colonial, Edwardian Baroque, Art Deco and Modernism. Johannesburg is situated on the High Veld Plateau and has a subtropical highland climate. The city enjoys a sunny climate with the summer months characterized by hot days followed by afternoon thunder showers and cool evenings, and the winter months by dry, sunny days followed by cold nights. Temperatures in Johannesburg are usually fairly mild due to the city's high elevation with an average maximum daytime temperature in January of 25.6 degrees Celsius, dropping to an average maximum of around 16 degrees Celsius in June. Blacks account for 73% of the population, followed by whites at 18%, colorites at 6% and Asians at 4%. 42% of the population are under the age of 24, while 6% of the population are over 60 years of age. 19% of the economically active adults work in wholesale and retail sectors. 18% in financial, real estate and business services, 17% in the community, social and personal services and just 12% are in manufacturing. Suburbs Johannesburg suburbs are the product of urban sprawl and are regionalized into north, south, east and west, and they generally have different personalities. Traditionally, the northern and northwestern suburbs have been the center of the wealthy, containing the high-end retail shops as well as several upper-class residential areas such as Hyde Park, Sandhurst, Norcliffe, Hewlingham, Brianston, and Houghton, where Nelson Mandela made his home. The northwestern area in particular is vibrant and lively, with the most black suburb of Sofia Town, once the center of political activity, and the bohemian-flavored Melville featuring restaurants and nightlife. Auckland Park is home to the headquarters of the South African Broadcasting Corporation, AFDA. To the southwest of the city center is Soweto, a township constructed during the apartheid for housing displaced black South Africans, then living in areas designated for white settlements. To the south of Johannesburg is Lenasia, a predominantly Asian neighborhood which was constructed during the apartheid specifically to house the Asians. Closer to Alexandria communities like Glenazel and Norwood have been integral in the urban landscape of Johannesburg. Economy Johannesburg is the economic and financial hub of South Africa producing at least 16% of South Africa's gross domestic product and accounts for 40% of Gauteng's economic activity. In a 2008 survey conducted by MasterCard, Johannesburg ranked 47 out of 50 top cities in the world as a worldwide center of commerce, the only city in Africa. Even though mining was the foundation of the Witwatersrand economy, its importance is gradually declining due to dwindling reserves and service and manufacturing industries becoming more significant to the city's economy. While gold mining no longer takes place within the city limits, most mining companies still have their headquarters in Johannesburg. The city's manufacturing industries extend across a range of areas, and there is still a reliance on heavy industries including steel and cement plants. The service and other industries include banking, IT, real estate, transport, broadcast, print media, and private healthcare, transport and a vibrant leisure and consumer retail market. Johannesburg has Africa's largest stock exchange, the JSE. Due to its commercial role, the city is the seat of the provincial government and the site of a number of government branch offices, as well as a consular office and other institutions. The container terminal city deep is known to be the largest dry port in the world, with some 50% of cargo that arrives through the ports of Durban and Cape Town arriving in Johannesburg. 
Johannesburg's largest shopping centers measured by gross leasable area are Santon City, Eastgate Mall of Africa, Westgate and Cresta. Melrose Arc is one of its most prestigious. Johannesburg is a cultural hub in South Africa and has a wide variety of cultural venues, making it a prominent area for many creative and cultural industries. Attractions Johannesburg is home to the National School of Arts, the University of Witwatersrand School of the Arts and the South African Ballet Theatre, as well as the Johannesburg Arts Gallery and other prominent cultural landmarks, such as the Mary Fitzgerald Square and numerous other museums, theatres, galleries and libraries. Johannesburg has not traditionally been known as a tourist destination, but the city is a transit point for connecting flights to Cape Town, Durban and the Kruger National Park. Recent additions have centered on the history museums such as the Apartheid Museum. There is also a large industry around visiting former townships such as Soweto and Alexandra. Most visitors to Soweto see the Mandela Museum which is located in the former home of Nelson Mandela. Visitors can also get a feeling for the layout of the city by visiting the Carlton Center in the southeastern area of CBD or the nearby Museum of Africa which covers the history of the city of Johannesburg as well as housing a large collection of rock art. Also, a large draw for tourists is Gold Reef City, a theme park which offers a depiction of mining life at the turn of the 19th century, including an underground mine tour. Other attractions include a large amusement park and a popular tribal dancing show. On the cultural front, the city has several arts museums, such as the Johannesburg Arts Gallery, which featured South African and European landscapes and figurative paintings. The suburbs of Melville, Newtown, Parkhurst, Norwood, Rosebank and Greenside are popular for their bohemian atmosphere, street life and many restaurants and bars. Shopping is often popular with tourists as the city offers a long range of venues and experiences, from numerous upmarket shopping malls such as Santon City, Mall of Africa and Nelson Mandela Square, to various markets and flea markets, such as the Oriental Plaza and the Rosebank Flea Markets. The latter are popular for souvenirs and African art. The Cradle of Humankind, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is 25 kilometers to the northwest of the city. The Sterk Fontaine fossil site is famous for being the world's richest hominid site and produced the first adult Australopithecus africanus and produced the first near complete skeleton of an early Australopithecine. Johannesburg and Environs offer various options to visitors wishing to view wildlife. In addition to the Johannesburg Zoo, one of the largest in South Africa. The Lion Park Nature Reserve next to Lezedi Cultural Village is home to over 80 lions and various other game, while the Kruger Drops Nature Reserve, a 1,500 hectare game reserve, is a 40 minute drive from the city center. The Deville Cheetah Center in the Magliarsberg runs a successful breeding program for cheetah, wild dog, and other endangered species. The Rhino and Lion Nature Reserve, situated in the cradle of humankind on 1,200 hectares of the typical high belt of Gauteng, also runs a breeding program for endangered species, including Bengal tigers, Siberian tigers, and the extremely rare white lion. We can thus conclude that Johannesburg's rich nature comes from its gold origin, as well as the present physical attributes such as its climate, temperature, suburbs, and tourist attractions. There you have it, explorers. A discovery of Africa's wealthier city, Johannesburg. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, do well to give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.